Jimmy G, Trey Lance is obviously no Montana Young, but what's it like to be in a locker room with a quarterback dynamic between the predecessor and the successors clearly defined? I'm curious if you could put that into words. I think the thing is, we always, we enjoy competition. That, that was something that sparked the San Francisco 49ers, even in the receiving group. I knew there was other guys that that wanted my job yeah. and that wanted, you know, to compete and, and, and earn it and stuff like that. And I, and the thing that I had, I was going to outwork you. So mm-hmm. it's nothing wrong with competition. Not, I, you know, and, and that was something Bill Walsh always brought to the table. And I think it brought out the best in, in, uh, in the players. So I, I, I understand what's happening in the locker room right now. And, uh, and they're not sure who's going to be behind center, but whoever's behind center, those players around that, that individual got to uh, make him better. They got to make plays for him. I'm curious how you feel about Trey Lance's start so far. Has, has anything really stuck out to you so far? Well, I, I think Trey is raw right now. He's raw. He's learning. Uh, uh, the sky's the limit. I didn't realize he was so tall because I, I had the opportunity <laughs> to meet him. He's like about maybe about six four. He was looking down at me, but you know, got that rocket arm and that can uh, also you know extend plays uh, with his legs. So I, I I see him as the quarterback of the future for the San Francisco 49ers. But you know, it's been a little rough for him, but 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 I think he's making progress. When it does come to I guess a two QB situation, where's the line between managing it properly and letting it possibly divide your locker room? Well, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of that, you know, because I, I feel like that's something that hap- you know, that can work uh, in collegiate football, you know, yeah. going back and forth. But, you know, for me, I feel like sometimes I had a, a quarterback carousel because there were so many other guys like, you know, Jeff Garcia, uh, Steve Bono, uh, other guys being put in, the, in, you know, behind center. And I remember what I would do during the week. I would pay attention to every little thing that was happening during the week. You know, yeah. what made this guy really tick well? What got him going and stuff like that? And when uh, Steve Bono was behind center or something like that, my job was to make plays for him. So yeah. that's what the receivers got to do. That's what the running backs got to do. That's what the offensive line, that's what they have to do. Whoever's behind center, you got to make that uh, individual. I want to dive in a little bit into some wide receiver talk. We've seen guys take over games like Devontae Adams, Tyree Kill, Antonio Brown. Who of those veteran wide receivers has really impressed you so far this season? Well, I think Adams pretty much said he's the best wide receiver in the league. (laughs) So it is what it is. (laughs) I'm sure Antonio Brown probably feels the same way. I'm sure he does. You look at DeAndre Hopkins, too. So the list just goes on and on. But, you know, uh, Adams, man, the last 37 seconds of that ball game against the Niners. Are you serious? <laughs> I'm, I'm saying what? Big's close why, to home for you. <laughs> why did they not double this guy? Take this guy completely out of the game. You know, put two guys on him, and he was still making plays. But, yeah, you, you got to give it to him. Uh, it's just something special about him and Aaron Rodgers and man, it's just like man if they got time on the clock and yeah and for some reason I saw him I think he brought back the, the belt did he bring the belt back I hadn't seen that in a while yeah you know you can tell he's having fun but uh yeah, yeah. Devontae uh Adams yeah what he's doing is uh, impressive as a guy who holds a ton of records are you at all I guess irked I guess would be the right word to say by the stats potentially being inflated and records being shattered. Does that kind of make you mad with, with the extra no. game? How do you feel about it? No, I just feel like that's part of uh, the game, the evolution of the game. And the ball is in the air more now than ever. And, uh, you know, receivers are getting more opportunities. But the commitment behind it, are you willing to make that commitment? And if you break, you know, my records, I'll be the first one to congratulate you, but it's going to, take a lot of hard work and dedication. It's like, I cannot believe that I actually, that, that I was able to accomplish so much, you know, throughout my career. And I give all the credit to my teammates. That's, the, that's why I have so many records.
This football season, Quaker is the NFL's official oatmeal sponsor and is teaming up with some fan favorites to make a play to benefit Feeding America and tackle hunger. So how did you get involved with Quaker? Oh man, uh, Quaker reached out and uh, it was the perfect uh, you know, campaign, uh, the perfect team. Then along with that, you had Drew Brees, you had Jerome Bettis, and you know, Quaker is uh, committing uh, 125,000 to, uh, you know, feed in America. And I didn't realize over 38 million people in America, uh, you know, that they go hungry. Imagine that. So, uh, you know, I feel like it's an exceptional uh, campaign. Hey, sports fans, if you want to watch more sports seriously, be sure to check out these clips right here. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel to see all the great content from us here at USA Today Sports.